Hi everyone, Dr. Bruce here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an important part of the nervous system called the sensory motor pathway. Basically, it's how information goes in and out of the nervous system. So the first thing you want to remember is the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of the cranial nerves, spinal nerves, and autonomic nervous system. So we're going to look at how information goes in and out of the central nervous system. The first thing you want to know is that sensory information goes into the nervous system and motor information comes out. Let's take a look at the sensory portion of the sensory motor pathway. It begins with a sensor or sensory receptor. All sensory receptors essentially do the same thing, which is take information in various forms and convert that to one type of information, electrochemical impulses called action potentials, which I will cover in a separate video. The information can be touch information, light information, sound waves, and so on, but all of that gets converted to action potentials. So this information out here gets converted by the sensory receptor or sensor, and then follows what's called an afferent pathway, which is usually a nerve, to the central nervous system. Once it gets to the spinal cord, it starts to move up a special pathway called an ascending spinal tract. So ascending tracts are all sensory, remember sensory in. The ascending spinal tract will move all the way up into the brain to the thalamus where it will send information to the part of the cerebral cortex that processes sensory information, which is in the parietal lobe, specifically the postcentral gyrus. So you might remember the anatomy of the cerebral cortex. You have the various lobes, and then you have the uh, what's called the central sulcus, and in front of the central sulcus is the frontal lobe. Behind the central sulcus is the parietal lobe. So the first fold or gyrus behind the central sulcus is called the postcentral gyrus. That's the parietal lobe. It processes sensory information. So let's say, and I'll use my, my coffee, spill coffee story to illustrate this. Let's say I pulled up to a, a coffee shop in my car and I reached out to grab the coffee and the lid popped off and spilled on my hand and burned my hand. All right, so here's here's what happens. So that information, the burning, the touch information, the pain, all is picked up by the sensors in my hand, the sensory receptors in the, in the skin of my hand. They follow an afferent pathway to the spinal cord. They move up to the thalamus, over to the postcentral gyrus of the parietal lobe, and I feel the pain and the burning. So what do I do? I decide I'm going to make a conscious decision to set the cup down. So where does that happen? That will happen in the frontal lobe, the precentral gyrus. So that's the first fold in front of the central sulcus called the precentral gyrus. That's for voluntary motor information. That information bypasses the thalamus and starts to move downward following a descending spinal tract. So all descending spinal tracts are motor. That information goes down these pathways, the descending spinal tracts, and exits the spinal cord following an efferent pathway. Efferent means away from the spinal cord, which is the spinal nerve, and goes to what's called an effector, or muscle, organ, or gland. In this case, it's the skeletal muscles of my hand, so I set the cup down. All right, so hopefully you've learned something about the sensory motor pathway, and thanks for watching, and see you next time.